transformation. I'm here for your visitation. Lord Jesus visit me. I want that visitation. There is really that day of visitation that once life will not remember the same. I want to enter another level. I want to move in another dimension into your plan and purpose for my life. I want to take territories for you. It's not just about me. Spiritual warfare is not just about you. It goes beyond you. It's about the brethren. It's about your family. It's about those that God has committed into your hands. I want you to talk to the Father. I move into that realm. I move. I move. That is why I need this encounter. That is why I need this visitation. Makoso topaka nikaski hate frenante. Ima soto kopake lantoski ha. Marika poski hata. Father, we are here again. Let your word come forth to us in simplicity. Let your word come forth, oh God, to us, bringing us into the revelation of Christ. Let your word come forth to us, bringing us to the dimension of power that you have prepared for us at this time. Lord Jesus, we submit ourselves to you. It is you alone we want to see. It is you alone we want to encounter. It is you, it is you. It's all about you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Father, give us trust to your word. Breathe upon your word. As you have said, it will not return to you void, but accomplish the very thing which you are sending it forth in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that the word we need we miss with faith in our hearts in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Hallelujah. Have your seat. I want to, I want to specially say thank you once again. <laughs> this is home for us. I want to thank God for God's servant, Apostle Tolu, and his beautiful wife. Thank you so much for the privilege, for the honor to stand on this altar to bring the word of God to God's people. I want to celebrate all the ministers in the house, Pastor Oyetoke, Minister Shilo, and all the other ministers, pastors, wives, uh, the ministers and the leadership, the workers of his worship present network. Thank you for the work that you are doing. The Lord is going to strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Uh, I bring greetings from a very good man, a great man of God. I'm blessed with his wife, Reverend Sam Oyeyuko. He, he will not be here with me, but because of the meeting that we are preparing for this Sunday, there are so many other things to put in place. I want to thank you once again for the invitation. I want to celebrate uh, Pastor uh, Doi. You know, I always know that she's, you know, there's a way you can feel somebody that has a measure of spiritual authority in the realm of the spirit. Thank you so much. You know, when the theme came and I was waiting on the Lord, I was asking God, spiritual warfare. 
I saw that she has been able to see into the heart of the father. You know, when you, have, you know, a lot of times people just speak to him, people just say things. But I always see that anytime she picked him, even last year, you can always know that she's actually getting into the heart of the father. Praise the living Jesus. And I know that the Lord will always reveal his might unto you in the name of Jesus. We are looking at spiritual warfare. It's, it's a very big topic, but I trust the Holy Spirit to help me tonight and tomorrow. I pick my test from Ephesians chapter 6, from verse 10 to 21. Today, I will stop at verse 16 because of time, so that tomorrow we we'll move on from verse 17 to 21. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that we may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having guided your wealth with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you'll be able to quench all the fairy dance of the wicked one. I will stop here because this is where I want to stop tonight. I trust the Holy Spirit to help us. Praise the living Jesus. A quick look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is a book that makes us to understand who we are in Christ. Chapters 1 to 3, we, we read, we know that it talks about who we are in Christ, what Christ has done for us. Then chapter 4, 5, and chapter 6, verses 1 to 9, make us to understand our work as believers what we need to do here on earth. Then verse 10 from chapter 6 to the end, make us to understand our standing position that even as believers, the things that God has said concerning us, like my sister was saying, there are some of us, we see a lot of promises that God has spoken concerning you, but you see that they are not being fulfilled in your life. It is this, our taking our stand as believers that will help us to be able to overcome and to be able to experience what Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. So having said that, I want to say that warfare means a fight against an enemy. Warfare means that you are fighting against an opposition. That means there is something that you have that the enemy wants to take hold from you. There is something that God has done for you that the enemy wants to take hold from you. You know we are believers. If you are really in Christ, if you are born again, the Bible says Christ has disarmed principalities and powers. Colossians chapter 2. The media, you can help me fast with scriptures. Colossians chapter 2. The Bible makes us to understand that the Lord Jesus, when he fought on when he died on the cross, he fought the devil. He took hold of all the powers of the enemy. So the devil does not really have power against God's children. But there is something that he uses. He uses wise. He uses schemes. He uses methods. He uses all kind of Thing in order to get at us and because so many of us believers we are ignorant of his weapons we are ignorances of his wise of his strategies we are the devil now kind of make us feel as if we don't have power Christ has died for us we have victory in Christ Jesus but why is it that we are not enjoying what Christ has done for us the reason being that even though the Bible says we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Christ we belong to Christ Jesus, but the devil does not like you. You need to have that and know that, that the devil does not like you. The devil does not like your husband. The devil does not want God's plan or purpose concerning your life to come to pass. The devil does not want you to fulfill God's plan. The devil wants your life to be cut short. The devil does not want you to enjoy all that Christ has wrought for you on the cross. So he will do everything in his power to make sure that God's children are attacked. And that is why this battle that we are talking about, I mentioned earlier, is not just about me. If you read down, by the grace of God, we'll get to that tomorrow. Because we're going to look, and I trust the Holy Spirit for the mighty move of the Spirit of God in our midst tomorrow evening. Because we're going to see that we need to be watchful. We need, one of the weapons is prayer. We need graces, prophetic graces, in order for us to watch the tactics of the enemy. So, but you need to understand that when you see a plant, a, a um, a tree that has fruit. That is the one you want to throw stone at because you want to get the fruit. And that's why the devil will try everything to, 
in order to get us, but you will not get us in Jesus' name. And wherever he has gotten you, tonight you are delivered. In the name of Jesus. And not only are you delivered, you are set free to bring others also into that deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that is what this spiritual warfare we are talking about is all about. It's because the en the, our enemy is not Omar being. Our enemy is the devil. And the first speaker, when she was speaking, she made us to understand this. Our enemy first tree is the devil. You know, in the Old Testament, they didn't have a revelation of the devil. All that happened, they believed that it was God. So you, when you read, even when you are reading 1 Samuel chapter 2, the prayer of Hannah, she said, God, he brought up, he bring low. You know, even Job, he didn't have the revelation that the person behind his atrocity was the devil. So they had this understanding that everything, whether good or bad, was God. But when Jesus Christ came, he made us to understand that the real enemy is the devil. Hallelujah. Not human beings. But he uses human influences. He uses human beings to get at us. That was why you remember that day when uh, Peter was speaking to Jesus. He said, you know, he told Jesus, he said, you will not go to the cross. Jesus said, I'm going to the cross and this is what happened to me. Peter said, no, you will not go to the cross. You know what Jesus said? He said, get it behind me, Satan. You could see that it was not Peter. It was the devil that was trying to use Peter. And the next moment, Peter was the same thing, that the person that was saying that uh, you are the son of God. You know, he was once also that gave the revelation. Praise the living Jesus. And that is making us to understand that the enemy that we are fighting is not your mother-in-law. And we're going to see in the scripture, how are we supposed to fight human beings? We're going to see the, the weapons that God has put in, in place for us. And the Lord will give us grace in the name of Jesus. So the enemy, the real enemy is the devil. Like we see in First uh, Peter chapter 5 and even our text, Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 12. It said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That your boss in the office that doesn't want you to get promotion is not your enemy. It's the devil that is trying to walk through that to your boss. So most of the time, we fight the wrong enemy. And that's why it seems that we are not getting answers even to our prayers. There's a way to fight and there's a person to fight. And as God's children, we must understand that the number one enemy, the great enemy, is the devil. John 10, 10 the Bible said the, the devil comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Hence, the person that is our enemy is the devil. Praise the living Jesus. Having said that, the first thing that that scripture said, verse 10, Ephesians 16, it said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. I want to say that spiritual warfare is not for, is not for weakness. That is why you need to be strong spiritually. That is why your work with God must be strengthened. That is why you need strength in the place of prayer, in the place of meditation in the word of God. Why? Because if you are not strong, the devil will be able to overcome you. But the devil will not overcome us in the name of Jesus. I'm going to round up with verse 10. So I'm coming back to verse 10. I want us to look at what the Bible says. It says, for we do not wrestle now and verse 12. Okay, let me go to verse 11. It says, put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil, the tragedies of the devil. The first, the one of the major battlefield is the mind. Our mind is the major battlefield. Because what happens in the mind is that, like my sister said the other time, you know, there is God's plan and purpose. The word of God is there. <clears throat> there is what God has said concerning you. That one is in your mind. Yet the enemy also is throwing at you thoughts and saying, you can't get it. For instance, the devil will throw at you that, oh, in your family, your firstborn got married at 42. Your second sister got married at 43. Ah, you, you just be, get prepared. You are now perhaps at 27. The devil will start throwing to your mind. That don't you know that you two will get married at 40 something. But if you now know as a believer how to attack the enemy, that no, the word of God says concerning me, that, we, that God said whatever I ask in his name, he will give to me. That's one. The Bible also said that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. 
All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, my mind, I condition my mind. I speak the word of God to my mind that I'm not going to even to get married at that late. I'm going to get married early. Hmm. Hallelujah. That is why we need to put on the whole armor. The devil uses all kind of wives, but our mind is the first and major battlefield of the enemy. It will bring thoughts, it will bring, even if you want to bring thoughts of hatred to you, it's first of all your mind. And that is why our, the Bible says we need to guard our hearts. For heart of it come the issues of life. Praise the living Jesus. So we are not resting against flesh and blood. Our fight is not against our brethren. It's not against our sisters. But it's against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The devil and his cohorts. And they are trying to get our ghost. You know those people that are not born again. They are not struggling so much because they are under his domain. He controls their life. But you that you are under Christ's domain. If we do everything to get you out of that coffering, that is why as a believer, working in righteousness is not because uh, God is the one that wants to attack you. It's because of the devil. Because the devil knows the moment you are out of that coffering, it can attack you. The devil knows the moment you are not in line with Christ, it can attack you. The devil knows that the moment he's able to get you to sin or to doubt God's word, then whatever he wants to do, he has sorted it. And that is why we need to know his strategy. We need to know his weapon. And as we do, I know the Lord will help us and will not be able to stand against all his wise in the name of Jesus. So he said, therefore, take off the old armor of God. And he's not saying that take off the full armor, I mean, part of the armor. You know, this man of God, our support, that wrote this particular scripture, is speaking from his experience because you know, most of the times, the apostles and Jesus Christ, when they are teaching, they use the things that happen around people so that they can understand. That was why when Jesus was teaching what they said, the soil went to sow. Because in that time, they do a lot of farming. Then this man of God was also trying to use the matter of the soldiers. Because you see, the, the soldiers, uh, the Israelites, Israelites, they were so much used to war, warfare, fighting. And you know, when they go to, the, to war, there's a way you must dress. If you dress, if you don't wear your hammer, you are not going, that person is not going to have, uh, the enemy can easily attack the person, whether on the head, whether on, on the shoulder, I mean, at the chest. Praise the living Jesus. I was reading today, first sermon, I think chapter 11, and the Bible said that the Israelites, they went to war, and it was only Saul and Jonathan that had sword, weapon, and I was asking myself, so what were the other people doing at the battlefield? They didn't have war, I mean, they didn't have weapon of warfare because the enemy has made sure that the Israelites at that time, they will not be able to make the same weapons of war so that they will not be able to attack the enemy. And that's sometimes a picture of what happens to us as believers. Some of us, we don't have the weapons that we're supposed to have to put on. And this, the Bible says, we are the one that's supposed to put it on. Paul, so Paul was using the analogy of a soldier that is on the battlefield that is fighting, that as believers also, we must be able to put on the hammer of God. And he listed them, about six of them. And we're going to look at them. And you know, he said, put on the whole hammer, not some. And the way he mentioned it, some of us will think that, okay, when I need truth, that's when I will just wear truth. You know, when I need faith, I will just wear faith. Hallelujah. It's the whole hammer. In fact, this scripture is talking about the entirety of our Christian life, of our work with God. Praise the living Jesus. And before I talk about the first hammer, which is truth, I want us to see also 2 um, Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, thank you. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. This is still the same thing. The Holy Spirit is still reiterating the same thing. That even though we are believers, we live in the flesh. Even though we are still in this body, 
but the person we are fighting, the one that is against your purpose, the one that is against God's counsel concerning your life, is not doing it through the flesh. He's doing it through the spirit. So for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations and every I thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 6. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know, I said earlier that one major battlefield is the mind. And this is also taking, making us to understand that in our thoughts, there are a lot of things that come up. There is a fight that goes on. But for us as God's children, the Lord has given us weapons that we can always stay on top of the plan and purpose of the enemy. So when you understand that the devil has, he, most of the time he uses the same trick. There was a time that any time I'm planning to go for retreat, that is when one of my children will fall sick. That is when they will start for me to, ah, you know, ah, you know, most times I will not be wondering, maybe I should stay back. Most times I say, go, go. You know, I discovered that sometimes you know, the mother in me will just feel like, ah, this child wants to, ah, hey, should I just stay back? Sometimes I will feel like, okay, I will stay, I will go tomorrow. So, but another time, once I say, go, don't worry. And I, I discovered that immediately I get to the place of retreat, they will say the child is now okay. Ah, until one day I had Pastor Nick and me saying the same thing, that any time she wants to go for retreat, that's when I cheated also. <laughs> that one of them was just for sick. I said, so the devil has the same method. So this is the day the devil knows that any time he tries that, it doesn't work for me. He stopped using that method. That met in fact, he has stopped for years now, he has stopped using that method, at least for almost for five years. Because even if they are permitting, oh, I will still go to where I want to go. So he, he felt that there is no need for to live in Jesus. So when we understand the plan of the enemy, because he always wants to attack your mind. He doesn't want you to pray. He, he will do things. You know, that is the time you are going to church. That is when that scripture, when he started, he said, I beseech you with the meekness of Christ. And gentleness of Christ. That day you are supposed to go to church. That, that is when your husband will do something that will annoy you. And you just feel like, mm -hmm. you know, some of us, that's when you just feel, you are going to church, you are not happy. You are going to church, you know, like one of our spiritual mentors said sometimes ago that anytime he's going to church, that is when, you know, you will hurry the woman, you will, be, you will stay inside the car, you will be honing the car. Pam, 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 pam. You know, one day say, God told you, I, why are you behaving like a madman? <laughs> Instead of you to go, you know, meekness. Instead of trying to, and you know, the wife too will get angry. You know, instead of you to go and look at the woman, okay, what can I help you to do? Can I hang on your clothes before, before the day? What can we do so that you'll be fast? Praise the living Jesus. You know, that is meekness. That is attacking the devil. It's the devil that is using the wife, trying to use the wife to delay them to get to church. And the man is still going to preach in church anyway. And now you are hungry. Don't you know that the devil, that's a, and that's one of the tricks of the enemy. He knows that he wants to get us out of to behave in a natural way, even though we are spiritual beings. He always wants to get you. We're going to see examples in the scriptures later by the grace of God. He always wants to get you to behave in a natural way. That's why somebody in the office, he will make sure that they're always offending you, they're always offending you, so that even for you to preach the gospel to them, you, why should I preach or why should I pray for this person? Why? Because you are anointed. Praise the living Jesus. And that's why one of the weapons of our warfare is meekness. And that's why the first, the first um, weapon that the Holy Spirit mentioned is truth. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 32, it says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The devil does not want us to know the truth. What is the truth? The truth is what Christ has done for us on the cross. The truth is what is in the word of God. The truth is that as a child of God, I must walk in love. The truth is that the Bible says, love your enemies. Even if your mother-in-law is doing something bad to you, if you begin to fall, show her love, if you begin to walk in love towards her, you'll see also that she also should be changed. But the devil will tell us that, Magbafu, the devil will speak to your mind, ah, she's not greeting you well, why should you greet her? She's not doing this to you, why should you do that to her? The devil will make sure that people are frustrating you. I remember there was a time we had this neighbor where we were staying, some years back and we any 
you know, as a doctor, I would just go out, I would go to office. Sometimes then I used to do calls. For some years now, I've stopped taking calls because of the nature of the work I do by God's grace. So I would come back in the morning wanting to sleep. But this man, we put the loud speaker, you know, I would be so hungry. You know, I wanted to, I want to sleep, I won't be able to sleep. My husband too, sometimes he wants to sleep, he won't be able to sleep. You know, we feel so angry. You know, ah, sometimes I feel like, ah, what kind of man is this? So one day, my husband went for administration and they packed a lot of gifts for him. Me and all those things. So he just shared them into two and he went and he gave it to the man. The man said, Pastor, you see, because I used to disturb, I won't disturb again. I don't... <laughs> He said, he said, I won't disturb again. He said, I, I, I will, because you know, the man, the most annoying thing is that he will put on the radio and he will go out. The man is a bricker. He will put on the radio and he will go out. So he, even if you go there to go and knock, sometimes one or two occasions I've gone there to knock. Even if you go and knock, there's nobody to respond to you. So he thought he said, he, because he himself knew that what he was doing, he was wrong. My husband said, no, they gave me, I went to minister and I felt I should share with you. So, you know, since that day, he stopped doing that. That is spiritual warfare. We must know the truth. There are a lot of aspects of our life we must know the truth. You must know the truth that as a woman of God, as a child of God, miscarriage is outside God's plan for you. So even when the enemy is bringing it, bringing the thought, even if you have had one experience, you know, there is that tenets where you have had an experience, now you are pregnant again, the devil bringing plates in your mind, and especially when it's getting to that time, the month, that you already used to have that, you will play it in your mind. Ah, this, you are going to lose this pregnancy again. But you know, as a child of God, as a woman that knows the tactics of the devil, you will tell the devil, the truth is that the Bible said that I shall not be barren. The Bible said that there shall not have miscarriage among you. Even that was even the old covenant. Now we're even under a higher covenant, which is what Christ has done for me. So I stand by the word of God. The Bible said that a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand, it will not come near me. You must know the truth. Yes, ah, and somebody is saying that um, breast cancer is not very common. Everybody uh, is not so rampant. But the Bible says a thousand falls by my side. 10,000 by my right side. It will not come near me. You must know the truth. You must know the truth of what Christ has done for you. You must know the truth that you have been forgiven in Christ. Sometimes the devil will bring to you your past experiences, the things you have done, and he will keep telling you that, do you think that you have escaped it? Do you think it's gone like that? Tell him that you have been delivered. Tell him that I have been forgiven. The Bible said, I'm no longer under the power of darkness. And now that the domain of Christ, we must know the truth. That is why the weapon of truth is very important. Now the Bible said that like the soldiers, they used to guard themselves. It makes you to be smart. And we are going to say that even almost all the weapons, they are all interwoven. Praise the living Jesus. So we must know the truth. Because when we know the truth, Jesus is the truth. The truth is that we have been delivered. The truth is that he has taken sickness and disease away from me. I need to know it. Some years back, the devil fought my mind. He brought all kinds of symptoms and he was bringing all kinds of thoughts. In fact, he was showing me in our house, <laughs> we have one land that we use for farm in our, in our house, in our space. So the devil said, you see, they will bury you in that place. You know, the devil can play on your mind. When you, and you know, if you are not have knowledge of symptoms, if you are in the head profession, it will bring all those things, it will make diagnosis for you, it will bring all those kind of things around you. That is why your mind, some of us, will, when you are having symptoms of malaria, you go on the internet, you Google, and instead of malaria for them to diagnose malaria for you, that is diagnosing other things for you. But the Lord now gave me a word. He said, when the enemy came in like a flood, he said, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. That was when that scripture came alive for me. Because I began to tell the devil, this is the truth. He said, with long life will I satisfy you. This is not me. And I began to see. And I began to get well. Because our mind, the devil fights your mind. He will tell you, this course, do you think you can pass it? Do you think you can pass it? But he said, you shall be heard and not tell. Hallelujah. So the weapon of truth, 
knowing what the word of God says concerning you is very, very important. And we must take hold. That is why our taking hold on the word of God is very essential. I want to move fast because of time. The second weapon that the, the Bible makes us to understand is that having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness. You know, righteousness for us as God's children is not by our effort. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 to 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth to the Jew first, and also to the Greek, verse 17. For therein it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. This breastplate of righteousness is you keeping believing that you are already saved in Christ. It is not because you cover your head. It is not because you know how to pray very well. It is first of all because of Jesus. And we are made righteous because of that. And the Bible says we should always wear this as an helmet. Help me with 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Let's say verse 17 to 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. And all things are of God, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. For to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then we are ambassadors for Christ, through God, this beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Mm -hmm. For he had made him, him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You tell somebody I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I can approach God anytime. Mazan shared something with me some years back. He said, Anytime we do something bad, normally the normal tendency is for you to run away and feel, ah, God, that is the reason why you should not pray. But in the kingdom, that is the reason why you should go and pray. Because you now have access to a father that is still waiting to receive you, that has forgiven you, that is still waiting to receive you. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Several scriptures talk about us being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we need to know who we are. We need to know that we have been made righteous. This is a weapon for us. This is why it is covering your chest. It is the one that is protecting your heart. So if you always know this, that I am made righteous, the devil, I'm no longer under the domain of the devil. I'm now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So I can approach God anytime. I can stay in the place of prayer. Praise the living Jesus. The, sec the third one is the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Some of us, you don't know that the gospel is a spiritual weapon. It's a very important spiritual weapon. Verse 15. And having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel. When you preach the gospel, that Romans chapter 1 verse 16 to 17 that we read, the Bible said that it is the power of God unto salvation. See, when you, anytime you preach the gospel, you are delivering somebody from the power of darkness. You are fighting a spiritual warfare. You are bringing somebody out of the domain of the devil into the domain of Christ. But the devil will do everything in order for you not to open your mouth to preach the gospel. He will make sure that that person you are supposed to, tell, to talk to, to bring that person out of darkness is the same person that is offending you in your class is the same person that hates you is the same person that is ganging up against you hallelujah but we need to understand that anybody that is not born again is under the domain of the devil and god wants us to snatch them out and that's why we must always be ready with the gospel of peace i won't say much about the gospel of peace because of time but i will just jump even to the fourth one which is faith Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one. Hallelujah. Some of us, things that have died in our lives, we will have them back 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, you know when Sister Doyin was ministering, she said it, and I have a confirmation. We are going to begin to have restoration, revival, even our spiritual gifts in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 35, it said women receive their dead back to life. Because it takes faith. I said that spiritual warfare is not about you. It's also about you taking your territories. And some of us, God wants to enlarge our territories beyond your classroom. Beyond even your household. Even some of us, God wants you to begin to take hold of that place that where you are, the devil cannot touch your loved ones. We lived in a house some years back and when we left, the, like two weeks after we left, the robbers came. And so when we had, we went back to the place to go and greet some people that were robbed. And there was this Muslim woman, as we entered the place, she said, Ah, Pastor, when you were here, they didn't, their mother was not even there, we just got married. She said, Ah, we, it, we just as we left, since you have been here, at least we were there for two years. Nothing happened, we didn't, no sound of harm robbery. But now that you are left, they just immediately you left, the harm robbers came. Where we are now, before we got there, there used to be this history of harm robbery, but immediately we get there, I mean, we got there. To the glory of God, God has been put. God is God that's protecting that place. But you must learn to take your territories for Christ. We must learn to take our loved ones for Christ. We must learn to make sure that our children did not die in our hands. Because the devil does not like our children. So we need this shield of faith. Not only for yourself, even for your others. We need knowledge of the truth. Not only because you are, it's also going to be a weapon for you to take up, your, to defend your life, but to defend others. If you look at the Old Testament, you look at the Israelites when they go to battles, the people that go to battle, they are not just fighting for themselves, they are fighting for the nation of Israel. And even in the New Testament, it's a higher life. The Bible says, that's why I said I'm going there tomorrow. Because we're going to look at the matter of prayer, supplication, prayer for the saints that the devil wants to do something in the life of a sister in the church and the Lord is waking you up to pray. And God is counting on us. Spiritual warfare is beyond us. There are a lot of things that has happened. The devil, the enemy has taken a hold, caged some of our brethren and the Lord is counting on us to snatch them. The Lord is depending on you and me. And that's why this team is so important to God and the Lord is counting on us. And I know we will not fail him. In the name of Jesus. So now, talking about the hammer of faith. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Timothy 6, 12. This is the only fight the Bible said we should fight. It's a fight, the good fight of faith. I wish you have energy. But since you don't have it, let me read it from this place. First Timothy 6, 12. Yeah, it's a fight, fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you, which you have declared to so well before many witnesses. This is the life that God has called us for. The life of faith is a life of fight. What, why does the Bible use the word fight? It's because there is an opposition. The devil wants you to, he wants you to believe something else. Faith is believing in what God has done for you. Believing the promises of God. Believing what God has said concerning you. Maybe God has given you promises. Like our sister said. Maybe God has said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And yet, everything that is happening around you doesn't look like it. The victory, the weapon that you need is the weapon of faith. To stand your ground, that it doesn't matter. This is what God has said concerning me. It will come to pass. It will happen. Praise the living Jesus. Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. I read verse 8 the other time, but I want to read verse 9 also now. Let me read from verse 8. It says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prows around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Verse 9. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. How do you fight against him? How do you be strong against him? Be strong in your faith. 
Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you have. We need to be strong in our faith. It is faith that helps us to stand against the enemy. When it comes in, it, you know, the shield, what the army, I mean, what the soldiers use the shield to do is that when there are so, I mean, the enemy is throwing darts, swords, it's the shield, it's the one they used to do, do like this, you know, to dodge the arrow. So when the enemy is throwing tricks at you, when it's for, for just put a suggestion, you know, your mommy had up attention when she was pregnant. Get ready. Your elder sister had her potential when she was pregnant. Get ready for her potential. So what is you? You are today? No. I'm not going to have her potential. Christ has taken my sickness and disease. So that thing will not get to you. But if you don't know the truth, and you don't have the shield of faith, then you begin to nurse that thought too. Don't. And you begin to say it too. Praise the living Jesus. Believe the word of Christ, what Christ has done for you, who you are in Christ. And speak out what to believe. Another thing is that even though you believe, the word of God had to believe, you need to say it. There was a time that somebody was saying something around me. And she said, and I, I mentioned that thing. I said, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to, I said it like three times. I didn't know my husband was listening. And so when the person left, my husband said, oh, yeah, say it, say that. It will not happen to me. It will not happen to me. <laughs> say it three times. Praise the living Jesus. Because you see, our words are very important. And that's why when a lecturer tells you that, all of you in my class, none of you will have a distinction. Immediately say it, me, I'm going to have distinction. Because if you don't say it, it will come to pass. Praise the living Jesus. We need the weapon of faith. We need the weapon of faith. As believers, we need to take it as we go in this our Christian journey. I remember there was a time about eight years ago when I was doing my master's, and there was this course that there were two courses, a lecturer two course. And so when the result came out, there was one, I think I scored maybe 68 or 69. Then another one I scored at it. I, I told the lecturer, I told, my, I said, I did not fail, though. I didn't fail this course. The lecturer said, I will show you that you fail. I said, yes, sir, I did fail your paper. I didn't know where I got the boldness. <laughs> I said, sir, I know I did not fail. He said, okay, one, you come to my office and I will show you that you fail. If, okay, what happened was I even for a come one of his PhD student. I told you, I said, ah, sir, this is what they gave me in this course. I know I didn't fail. Ah, he said, you better take it. That man is nobody you can't, is no go area. I called my supervisor. I said, sir, this course, I, I saw 38. I know I didn't score 38, sir. I didn't fail this course. You know, this lecturer is older than all of us. Just take it. Forget. Ah, I said, I'm not going to do carryover. <clears throat> For masters, I'm not going to do carryover. So I called another professor in the department I know. I told him also, he said, ah, just forget it. I said, I know I didn't fail this course, sir. I know I, I didn't fail. So I told the, so the PhD student told the lecturer, so the lecturer said I should come. He said, I will show you that you fail. So one day, after, immediately after one seminar, I went to his office. We were like three that believed that we didn't fail. So when we got to his office, he said, the two other people should stay back, that I should enter first. And I was praying the Holy Ghost. So I entered, you know, I will show you that you fail. So he brought out my script. And somebody already said that it's dangerous for him to bring out your script. So he brought out my script and he was showing me. He said, I will show you that you fail. So I, when he finished showing me, I saw that he didn't have about 10 marks for me. I said, sir, you didn't have these marks. Ah, he said, oh, so sorry. You didn't have this one. And then they had, I had scored 53. He said, because he was telling me, he said, I know you scored the highest, second highest in my other course. But this one, if I said, I didn't fail, sir. So he said, ah, so I didn't know that score. He said, I'm sorry. He was the one that went to the course coordinator himself to go and record the score for me. So I didn't have a carryover. But the other people actually failed the course. <laughs> Praise the living Jesus. The weapon of faith. And that is why we need strength. I will come back to it. Praise the living Jesus. So, we need faith as a weapon. I want us to look at the Shunammite woman briefly so that we can pray. The Shunammite woman, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 18. This is a woman of faith. I'm always praying that God just help me. This woman had faith. Kai, 2 Kings chapter 4. I read from verse 18. 
But let me give us a background because, I will, because of time, I will just speak verses. This woman, she was a rich woman. Her husband was old. She didn't have a child. And she ministered to God's servant. He spoke the word of God into her life. She gave birth to a child. When the child was a little grown, one day he went to, the, to go and meet the father. And so when he came back, you know, I mean, he was in the field with the father and he was crying, my head, my head. The father, I don't want to go to the story of the father. The father said, carry the child to the mother. So when the child got to the mother, the Bible said the child died in the hand of the woman. And you know what she did? That was I said, she's a woman of faith. She's a very strong woman. If you don't have strength in the day of battle, you will act in a foolish way. In the day of battle, you act in a natural way. The natural way is for her to sit down and be crying and roll on the ground. The only child she had, it took her years to have that child. And that child also now died. The natural, that's why if you are going to live in the miraculous, we must have the weapon of faith. So the natural way is for her to just cry and shout and even everybody send for her husband. But she did not do that. Huh? What a woman of strength. She carried the child. You know, the kind of strength that did not make her to shed tears. That even the neighbors, even everybody around did not know that something has happened to her. May God give us strength. May God give us grace. That you have faith and exam. And even people have not known that you have faith. It has happened to my husband before. They faith a course. And he said, when everybody, they were, they asked everybody to go to Zion, to go and pray for those that did not, that faith, that course. He also followed them. He went to the Zion in their school. He was praying. He was, you know, they prayed. He didn't tell anybody because he knew that he didn't faith that course. So he just went to God. All the other dis results, he had distinction. So only that one they put F and thank God normally people normally check his result first because he was I think first or second he was the best student in his department that time so you know everybody will check for his results you know when you are good people will look for your result that's why it's good to be good <laughs> so but I don't know what happened that the most of them did not even know they didn't notice the F in that course so he said he went to God that God this is what you said concerning me two weeks after they removed that result they pasted another one. And he, had, and he passed the exam. He had distinction. I think he had B. Where they are put F. So it takes a lot of strength. That's why the Bible says we should be strengthened in our inner man. That in the day that you have challenges of life, where the enemy is throwing things at you, we are not only crying, we are standing our ground. You are saying, no, I'm not going to take this. So the woman said, I'm not going to take this. So she sat with the donkey and she was going. She didn't even cry on the way. To the extent that those servants don't know that anything has happened. They didn't even ask for the child. The husband said that she went to say, give me a donkey. He only said that, is it, is it the new moon? Uh, why are you going? Because it's a sign that she used to go to the man of God occasionally also to minister to him. You know, there are some people that God will answer their prayer quickly. People that minister to God's servants. No, I'm not joking, no. You've forgotten that there was a time some people went to Jesus Christ. They said that this man, he has done this for us, he has done this for us. He has built us, please, because of that, Jesus Christ healed his child, the centurion. So she was on the way. She didn't cry. So when she got to where she would cry, she cried. There's a place to cry. There's a place to cry. You know, Sister Donny was saying the other time, there's a place to cry. You know, as pastors, why sometimes you don't cry where everybody will see. There's a place to cry. But when she got to the man of God, she, she, the Bible says she held him at his feet. Even the man of God, even for us, send message to him. Is it well with you? Is it well with your child? Look at her heart trance. It is well. Her heart trance is not change. That's why the situation and circumstance. That you don't have money. That the economy, that things are hard in Nigeria. Doesn't mean that God will not meet my need. The Lord will supply my need according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to lack. I'm not going to fail. It is well with me. And so she said it is well. But when she got to the feet of the one of God, she heard his feet and she busted out. She has tried. There is a place we cry. When we get to our father, we cry because he will do something quickly. He will do something. I've always known him to do something quickly. 
about a few weeks ago, I was so overwhelmed with a challenge in my place of work. And you know, when I'm overwhelmed like that, one of the things I do, I will just be going to church every day. I will, I will just be going. I will be praying. You just know that I'm going to church. I was just, is it that before I go to office or I will just go to church? And I was praying. And my husband knows that something is wrong. Within, one, within three days, go and intervene. Because I know I'm not fighting human beings. I can't do anything. I can't shout at them. They are my bosses. But when I go to pray, ah, I'm always, in fact, because I've seen it over and over again. Because the father that we serve, if it's anything that's about his children, and it's about his purpose and cancer for your life, and if you ask for somebody that is given to his purpose and his cancer, he will defend you. That is why our fight with men is that of meekness. And so when the woman got there, she, she busted. And the man of God said, what is wrong? And she said, did I ask you of a child? Ah, he told that man, go and do something. And she said, I will not leave her until you go. And she got a child back to life. So she was one of those people the Bible was referring to in Hebrews chapter 11, 35. He said, women receive their dead back to life. It takes faith. The devil may throw at you death, but you are the one that will not stand. You stand against it. Yes, but the devil threw death at my face in the face of our first child. It was three and a half. It was for meeting blood. So we had to rush him with was tongues where you got to the teaching hospital. For four days, it was not only for meeting blood, it was urinating blood. They were querying all kinds of things. They said, he says, I said, I'm AA, my husband is AA. They query all kinds of things. They said, this blood plate length has come down. I said, no problem. So the fourth night, I told my, the fourth morning, I told my husband, let's take this child out of this place. The doctor said, no, we're going to investigate him for cancer of the blood. I said, no, not my child. I took my stand. I said, I'm going to sign against that man. I'm a doctor, but I saw that this is the devil. This is the devil I'm fighting. This is not what God said concerning this child. I know what God has said concerning this child. It's, I know the promises of God over his life. I know the counsel of God over his life. At least God has been speaking to me about him, even before I had him. So I know. Because this child, I know the devil. You know, when, when there's a great purpose and destiny, the devil will try every means. When I was seven months pregnant with this child, that was when I lost my dad. So this Sunday, we were in church. My daddy died Monday morning. For hours, my husband was just praying. In fact, our pastor was like, Pastor Sam, you are just praying. We got to my husband was praying. I don't know that he was praying for me. In the early hours, he prayed till around 3 a.m. He switched off his phone. That was when my dad died. And you know, normally that shock, being the first one, supposed to affect me. And that shock actually affected me. I started fasting to, I went to the hospital. The doctor said, I will admit you. I said, don't worry, I will be fine. He said, I'm supposed to admit you. I said, I will be fine. Because I, I discovered that night, like three consecutive nights, I would just wake up having stomach ache. I would not be able to sleep. And so one day I would wake my husband and we would pray. So one night I told the devil, I said, tonight I'm going to sleep. And this pregnancy I will carry to town. And that was the end. I carry him to town. So I knew that now three and a half again, the devil bring in all kinds. I said, no. I told the woman, because it was as if fight doctor to doctor. You know, it was that serious, because you feel like you know the truth. I said, but the truth is that this child, the devil wants to attack. The devil wants to keep him afflicted. So, and we've been praying, speaking the scriptures. And I was just, I just gave her to the third one, just like two months. So staying there around the hospital was serious for me. So we went home. That day, my husband told him, he said, come and urinate. And let's see the devil that we ask you to urinate blood again. And that was the end. The boy started gaining weight again. They sent us another resort. The platelet crown was fine. His PCV was fine. Everything was now okay. And it began to grow well. Since that time, he has never even sit there. Except for one day again, the devil tried something. He just a small cut. Praise the living Jesus. If you don't know how, that you are fighting the devil, he will use human influence. He wanted to use the Afime because the Afime doctor was a was not a Christian. But there was another Christian doctor. That one, I think she was sensing also. So that one also said, okay, don't worry, doctor. Where you are going? We'll just take the small sample, just to confirm. I said, no problem. Take it. Whatever I want to take. And when they took it, I collected it. I prayed on it. Because you must know the enemy. Hospital is not your enemy. Doctors and nurses are not your enemy. But the devil and sickness. And that's why you must know how have the weapon of warfare. We must have faith as the shield to be able to help us to, to stand 
against the wise of the enemy. The devil does not like us. The devil does not want her children to succeed. Look at this woman. He even that she was a woman of faith. She would have lost that child and it would have been justified. It will have been okay. It will have been okay. He wants to take territories for Jesus. God wants to use us to raise people back to life. I mean, even physical dead. We must have this shield of faith. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Just because of time, let me go to the other woman. That's Mark. Let me take it from Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. That is the Shunammite woman. I mean, the woman with the issue of blood. She has heard about Jesus. She had what we now call fibroid. Probably fibroid or monum problem that she was menstruating, bleeding. She will have become so weak. The devil has mesmerized your, her life. Maybe you are here, you are battling with a sickness. Tonight is the end of that affliction. In the name of Jesus. Tonight is the end of that affliction. Whichever way the devil has made you pant, that is kind of afflicting you, trying to put you under a, 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 his domain, yet you belong to Christ. You are free in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, if Christ has set you free, you are free indeed. Mark chapter 5. From verse 25. The Bible says she has suffered a great deal. Verse 26. For many doctors. And she has spent all that she had. But when she heard about Jesus. Let me jump to verse 27. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd. And touched his robe. For she thought to herself. If I can just touch his robe. I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. She heard about Jesus. She had liked to get to her mind and she spoke out what she believed. You need to speak what you believe. You need to do that constantly. When somebody beside you speaks negative thing, can't I eat? Can't I eat? In fact, they may even be believers. Today, I sent one of my children to go and grab paper. And she was already, he was already was telling me, said, Mommy, what if they don't have? What if they, I said, this thing you are saying, I said, I reject it in Jesus' name. They will have. Because you see, he was, I already see that it was so negative. So, and when he got there, actually, he didn't meet the person. So, how to send the second person to go? And the second person got it done. You know, because there's power in utterance. So, I said, this is your utterance. Say what is good. Don't say that. What, let it be in your thoughts. Because you see, most of the time, the devil doesn't even know what you are saying when you say it out. Ha. Ah, I have the way I'm feeling, I have typhoid. You've already given a diagnosis. So when you get to the hospital, they will diagnose you with typhoid. It's malaria, it's malaria, it's malaria. You've already given yourself a diagnosis. I don't have money. You're already saying what is contrary to the word of God. This woman, she said, and she acted. After speaking, we must act. Faith also act. Faith act. Whatever you need to do, you can act by prayer, you can act by praising God. You can act even by giving thanks. You can act also by keeping on speaking. Praise the living Jesus. So faith, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, that without faith, that through faith, we understand that the word was framed by the word of God. God, the Bible says, and God said, and God saw. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, not through that, we say God said, and God saw. You will see what to say. And that is why one of the weapons of the enemy that we can use to attack the enemy is our mouth. Your mouth is the exit of your spirit. Say what you want to say. Say what the word of God say. Say what you believe. Take hold on the word of God, the truth, and say it out to the Father. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. So, I want to go back to verse 10 because I said I'm going to round up in verse 10. My time is, I just have like 30 minutes more so that we can pray. Or is it 23 minutes more? So that we can pray. If it chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For us to be able to stand against the enemy, we need strength. This strength we are talking about is not physical strength. Is spiritual strength. If somebody is weak, the devil can usually attack those that are weak. But for you to have strength, you need to fellowship with God. You need strength from Jesus. 
praise the living Jesus. And so we see that in Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 28 to 31, the Bible said that those that those that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. Because even our, those that are weak will release strength unto them. And as believers, when we stay in the place of prayer, when we stay in the place of fellowship, when you stay in the place of communion, you are getting strength. Because you need strength to stand against the enemy. I say you need strength to walk in the word of God. You need strength not to act in the flesh. Because the devil will always want us to act in the flesh. When, we, when he throws things at us, and when we act in the flesh, he will be able to attack us. But he will not do so anymore in the name of Jesus. We will always stay in victory that we have in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. That is why we must not faint. The day that the devil is planning, the day that he brings to you that somebody wants to rape you and you don't, know, you don't have strength, you must not faint that day. That is the day you need strength. You need, you remember you have to pray in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit will teach you wisdom on how to go about it. We need strength on daily basis. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 16, Apostle Paul, when he was praying for the Ephesian believers, he said that the Lord, let's take it from verse 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and heart is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by spirit in the inner man. The Holy Spirit gives us strength. That is why Jesus said, the word that speaks to you, their spirit and their life. That what will renew your strength, that what will impart strength to you, it will give you faith, it will also help you to, to know the truth. And so you'll be able to stand against the wives of the enemy. That is why we need strength. Our youth, this generation, they need strength. Because if you look at the internet, the phone is there. It will hinder you so many times from praying. You want to pray, but that is when your phone will ring. That is when something... So you need strength even to be able to have the grace to put it off, to put it on silent mode sometimes so that you can stay in the place of prayer. We need strength and God is going to multiply it unto us in the name of Jesus. Matthew 4, 4. Jesus said, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Because you see, as the physical food gives you physical energy, and when you pray also, what happens to you is that you are exercising your muscle. It's like exercise. Because when you eat, you must do exercise. So the same thing, when you pray, I mean, when you meditate in the word of God, it gives you strength. You need the word of God. You can't do without the word of God as a child of God. You can't do without your daily devotion with God. You can't do without it. You will discover that sometimes the day that you did have fellowship with God is the day that somebody will annoy you and you get angry easily. But the day you spend time in communion and fellowship, somebody will get angry at you. I mean, annoy you and you will still feel, mm. maybe he doesn't know. And you can easily forgive. You can easily forgive offenses. Why? Because you have received strength. In the place of fellowship. Jesus in Luke chapter 22. When he was praying in Gethsemane. From verse 39 to 44. In verse 43 the Bible said that. When he was praying. The angels came. And they strengthened him. Hallelujah. I want us to rise on our feet. Whatever be that the devil has taken from you. We understand that we are not fighting human beings. We understand his tactics. And we will refuse, we take over. We will stand with the weapon of the truth. The bet of truth. I want you to talk to the Father. I want you to talk to God. Father, I receive grace to put on the whole armor of God always. Father, the devil will not attack my life anymore. Even when he's throwing his arrow, it will not get to me. It will not get to me. I receive grace to go with the shield of faith. I receive grace to have strength in my inner man. Like the woman, the Shunammite woman. I receive grace to have strength to react in a spiritual way. In a spiritual way. So that I can have victories. So that I can have victories. Can you help me project Hebrews chapter 11? Hebrews chapter 11. 
verse 34. Kalibro sotoria kapapa pa zete kila rosa. Jekete peke kepo sotoria kapala kozo prena. Sorry, give me 32. Let's take it from verse 32. Let's take it from verse 32. And what more shall I say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Simeon and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Next verse. Who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lion. The devil is a roaring lion. If I go to stop his mouth, it has to breathe through this weapon of faith. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness were made strong. Hmm. Became wax valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the enemies. You want to turn the, to flight the army. Women, verse the last verse. Women receive their dead back to life. I want to talk to God. I want to receive even dead situations back to life. I want to win territories for you. I want to take hold. The devil will not attack my marriage anymore because I will not fight my enemy, my husband. Even when my husband tried to do things that would got me hungry, I will, I will respond the meekness. I will respond the meekness. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. How we take territories. Whatsoever the enemy has taken from me. No, I stand my ground. I stand on the promises of God. The promises of God are here in heaven in Christ Jesus. Marika po sotoria, jegegegegegege bo shita kuskipa. I will use the weapon of the gospel of peace. Hey, rege ba sotoria. I will not be walking in the flesh. I will not be a carnal believer. The devil will not be able to use me against my brethren. Marko sotoria, jegele mo soto. Rika pa 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 ba shana kina kuskipa. Rege bo sakiha, maleko sotoria ba 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 shata. Rika po sotoria, makoso toki na na nosa, jegele broshita, masataria, makeno nosa, makaka gaga gaga gaba shire, masete kipaskupa, maleke skupa la brosoteria, jegele mo sopaniata, jege masoto. My mind is going to be filled with the word of God. Oh, I will not allow the devil to win battle of my mind. Oh, them thoughts of suicide. You are here, you are already thinking of suicide. You are thinking of suicide. That is the devil making a mess of your mind. Your mind, you are not going to die young. You are not going to die prematurely. We snatch you from the power of the darkness. We snatch you, we snatch you. From every suicidal thought. Ask the Lord for strength in your inner man. Ask the Lord for strength. You need strength to stand against the enemy. Warfare is not for weakness. Spiritual warfare is not for weakness. The Bible says, Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Makosotoria kapala baba bashine. Mese tekele kushitaria. Mareke bosotoria kepana. Rakoskinate. Shegegegegege boshine. Masoto kolo bosutaria. Marege bosha. Masete kele bosutaria. Maragadagaga bashata. Masotoria baneko sotoria. Marika pala kosoto. Shegegegegegegegege boshine. Masotoria bakila kusha. In Jesus, mighty name we are prayed. There's someone that is, I don't know whether you are here or maybe you are hearing online. There's a battle you are facing about your child. And it takes faith to also fight battle for your children. Because you begin to look at this child. Sometimes you are, because he's so misbehaving. And sometimes you look at it that this is contrary to the promises of God for his life. But because of the way he's misbehaving, it makes you get annoyed. You're already thinking in your mind that this child 
whatever wants to happen to him, let it just happen to you. He's a devil. The, devil, the Lord is snatching that child out of the hand of the devil in the name of Jesus. It takes faith to raise children. Ha, it takes faith to raise children. Because the devil will make them to do things and you wonder, this is my child. Praise the living Jesus. But that, for that woman that is hearing me right now, the Lord has set that child free. In the name of Jesus. And your mind is renewed. In the name of Jesus. I want us to talk to the Father. Father, release strength unto me. I need strength in my inner man. I need strength. Father, every time I come to you in the place of prayer, release strength to me. Release strength. I cannot do this without my strength. Mako sotoria kapaliata. Jegele koski palabro sotoria. Make no koski nante. Malemo sotoria. Efele koski palako sota. Make mate. Marika po sotoria. Marika papa papa mashante. Regebo sotomate. Jegele broshane. Ma sotoria. Rika papa papa shata. Rika poski la brava mashata. Malika po sotoria. Marika pa le koski na 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 shine. Masotoria baba bashine. Masete. Father, we ask for strength. In the name of Jesus. Yege bo soto. Malika sotoria. Kene mo satira bro shape. Eka sete. Makuski na. Yege ge 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 bo shina. Masotoki na. Jesus was in the place of prayer. Ke bo suta. We ask for the ministry of angels. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, I ask for those of your children that are here that need that renewed strength. We ask that the angels of God begin to minister to them. Right now, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, just as the angels minister to Jesus, and he has strength to continue. He has strength to go to the cross. It was not easy to go to the cross. He felt like giving up. He felt like, why must he be through the cross? Father, is it the only way? Can't he go through another way? Some of you, you already ask, you are going through challenges of life. And what you need is strength to go on. Because it's a process you must go through in order for you to get to the peak of God's plan for you. But the devil is throwing discouragements at you. We pray for you right now as a church. That in the name of Jesus, the Lord will strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. You will not abort that process. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Ramoso peke te freka pa likos kehata. Rika poski na nante poski hake pa suteria. Hear the word of Christ. Ika sutoria kapa le koski ita fanadoza. I will strengthen you. I will help you and I will uphold you. The Lord is going to give the strength that you need. In the name of Jesus. You will not faint. In the name of Jesus. Because he's the one that gives strength to the weary. He will quicken you in the, your inner man. In the name of Jesus, Esther did not abort the process. Joseph was, was at a point also discouraged. He told that man, he said, he said, please just mention me to the king. He said, mention me to the king because I was, I was sold as, a, as an Hebrew, as a slave. He was tired of the prison because he did nothing wrong. He was tired, but I asked a question that if you leave that time, what will you go and do? It was not your time. I pray for you. That, that very thing that God is preparing you for. The Lord will strengthen you to go through the process. And you will finish strong. In the name of Jesus. No matter the plan of the devil. To withdraw you from the process. It will not come to pass. In the name of Jesus. You will finish well. In the name of Jesus. Thank you our Father. In Jesus mighty name we are prayed.